well, hopefully you've, we're able to learn something from creating a plate with a hole in it. We're going to do something similar. We're going to make this plate a little bit bigger and we're going to use a slot. So your purpose here is to create a 4x6 uh, plate under the specifications here. We're creating a 4x6 plate. It's going to be 3 inches thick. The slot itself will be a half inch in radius and then one inch length and we'll put quarter or half inch chamfers on the top. We're going to locate it one and one but what's going to be different this time is we're going to use the XY plane. We're going to also add these general notes to the drawing. So we did the dash one earlier now we're going to work on the dash two. We're going to do the same kind of thing we'll create the 4 by 6 plate on the YZ plane at 1 and 1 and then I'll show you how to quickly auto constrain it. We're going to use the pad feature to create the solid in the part body. We're going to use the same features you've done earlier using the measure tools and measure the length of the part to verify the lengths. And we're going to do something new here. We're going to do model based definition datums. So we're going to put our datums in in the 3D model space. So that's called model based definition. When you're doing the things you did on a drawing inside the actual 3D model, that's called model based definition. This was created so that we would no longer have to do drawings. But it's been 30 years now and all I see is more work where we're doing both. So I got to train you on how to do both for right now. We'll just learn how to insert some datums. You'll see it's really simple, pretty quick to do. So we'll put our datums in in the model space. We'll insert the border just like last time. We will edit the text just like the last one. And we'll add the general notes. So these general notes up here in caps, we're going to add those to the drawing border. And I'm going to explain those, what the general notes are. I'll revise the size of the border if I need to. Um, we'll create those same orthographic views that you learned in the previous exercise. So we'll do primary view, two principal views, and isometric view. We'll put the datums on the drawing after we dimension it up. We'll add the general note. And make a PDF of the drawing. Okay, so let's get started with the creating a sketch part. We're going to do the 4x6 plate on the XY plane and see how it differs from working on the YZ plane. I will rename this right away so I don't forget. We'll go to properties and I'll change that to a dash 2. I'll leave the P for part, change the dash 1 to a dash 2. Okay, this right here, I had you set in your preferences, if you recall. You're going to replace the X's for your student ID. I'll select the part body and make it the in work object. I'll select the XY plane and create a sketch. Now you notice that the H is going straight down and the V is going side to side, left to right. So we're in America, horizontal goes side to side in America, vertical goes up and down. So what we're going to do here is hit the normal to view feature. That's found in several of the tabs. View is the one I know always has it, so if you go to view, Again, on the bottom features, you'll see normal view. We click normal to view. That moves the H horizontally, and the V is vertical. Unfortunately, H is going to the negative. H always goes to the positive here, so we're going to reverse that simply by hitting normal to view again. 
So anytime your part gets cattywampus, you can hit normal to view. So if I accidentally did a rotate, you can hit normal to view and it'll flatten that out. Okay, we're going to create that rectangle. So back to the sketch tool. That's the tab called sketch. Using a rectangle. I'll start here. And I'm just going to come out oh, about to here. And I'm going to highlight this whole thing and go to auto constraint. So if you remember from the previous demo, we showed auto constraint. The auto constraint tab or pop up window comes up. The 11 elements are highlighted. You got to make sure you do it in the same order I did it. I highlighted everything, including the axis, and then selected AutoCAD. The second option down is Reference Elements. I'm going to click here and I'm going to pick the two lines that would be my datums. We're going to stack dimension this and we're going to select OK. So under Constraint Mode, you want to switch it to Stack here. There should be only two elements, and those are the two lines that I establish as my datums. And you'll see 11 elements for uh, everything being constrained. Select OK. And just like that, we've got our dimensions in here. OK, I'll kind of bring this one out over here. Now, you've learned some tricks about doing slots already. I think the easiest one is to do the elongated hole, which I call slots, but Katia calls them elongated holes. They are found under the sketch tool. So down there on the bottom somewhere you should see the elongated hole. Hopefully yours looks similar to mine. They've got the profile, uh, rectangles, circles, lines, points, which we've learned how to do. Now we're adding a new feature called elongated hole. And I'm just going to come. Oh, I see my mistake. I said one inch. I meant to do two inches. We're going to go down the middle here and go from this coordinate to this coordinate a length of two inches. I know it's really small on my screen but that says two inches. And I click a position and I come out a quarter of an inch which means it will be quarter inch on both sides which will put it at a half of an inch. I'll click a position and the one constraint it gives me I don't like. So I'm going to click on that constraint and delete it. I am going to locate the slot. And how you locate the slot is we activate constraints. And what I'm going to do is double click constraint so it stays on. And I'm going to dimension to that horizontal line and to my datum. And then I click a position over here. And click off of it and it locks that up at an inch and a half. You'll notice that the green line right here that green line is the center line and it turned green because I've constrained that. Yet my slot is not constrained. So in order to constrain my slot I'll just turn the grid off I think you'll be able to see that better. I've turned the grid off over here in case you didn't catch that. I'll go back, as long as I have constraint already active, I can grab this curve here. Okay. And I'm going to go back here and make this fix. I said half inch by one inch. That was a half inch diameter. It's a quarter inch radius and two inches in length. So I'm going to edit that to be a quarter inch radius and two inch length slot. And we'll save that. Okay, so back to Katia. 
you'll notice that I've located the slot. I've got the radius here, yet the slot is still not green. I haven't identified the length of the slot by identifying the length of the line. So we will go to the constraint, which is already active. Select that line and click a position. All right, so I'm asking you, why do you think the slot is not fully constrained? Why does it not turn green to represent the fact that it's fully constrained? We have to locate the slot. I've located it this direction. I've identified the length of the slot here. I've identified the radius here. But I didn't identify the location going this way, horizontally. Again, I have this constraint that locates it up and down, but I don't have a constraint to locate it side to side. You do not dimension to the center of the slot. You dimension to the end of the slot where that point starts. And how that works is I grab the point, and I grab the datum, and I create a dimension here. Now, for some reason, this and this are not horizontal lines. When I go to my legacy preferences, under the sketcher option under mechanical, we told it to do that by having these on. So that should have came on. So I don't know, this is, the old system used to put them on and the new system doesn't seem to do that. So I'm going to say OK. And what we will do is we will just grab both lines using the control button. Make sure that your constraint is turned off. If you double clicked it, you got to turn that off. With both lines active, you can hit this down arrow and hit the constraints dialog box, which is the second one, and choose horizontal for both lines. When I select OK, it now knows that these two lines are horizontal which means since these are tangent to the curve on both ends this quarter inch radius is being identified on both sides now before it was not without those horizontals okay you're fine right there if you've got that I'm gonna just kinda do a demo and hit undo the reason being is if I wanted to have a different kind of a slot you could go to constraints and pick this curve here and click a position I could literally have that different value so if I wanted a slot that looked like that I could do that alright in this case I don't want to do that I just want to have my slot quarter inch on both sides so I'm going to hit undo and reactivate these two lines using the control button and we'll go to the dialog box which is the second icon and choose horizontal again so that those lines are horizontal this part is fully constrained I know that because when I go to analyze and hit this icon it says constrained when I hit this icon, it says that this outside profile is closed and this outside or this slot is closed, meaning again all elements are adjacent. Again, adjacent means that all the elements are truly touching each other at the endpoints and that there is no gap and no overlap. I'm going to hit escape. I, don't, I just clicked on something on accident. All right, in a previous exercise, I showed you how to create chamfers. I'm going to show you how to do chamfers all at once. I hit chamfer. Here's my tool palette for chamfers. I just highlight this. I'll come up here to the link and I'll type in a half inch in length. 45 degrees is the default. I can just hit enter. 
and it automatically does the chamfers at a half inch. My question to you is, did it do it correctly? Hopefully you recall from the previous demo that I need to not dimension the hypotenuse at a half inch, but the distance from the corner, the intersection corner of the original two lines over a half inch. So I will use the undo button to undo that and try it again. Again, this is my intersection corners. I want to go a half inch over and then chop it at 45 degrees. So, unfortunately I can't set that up first. I have to go to chamfer, commit to what I'm going to chamfer. By highlighting the top, it grabs both lines at once instead of this doing it one at a time. Do you recall what you needed to pick in this mode? We wanted to use first length and angle, so you got to make sure this icon is active in the tool palette. Click a position or type in a length. Again, this time I'll do a half inch and hit tab. And I've got half inch chamfers, 45 degree angles. Now it's time to dress this up. Let's move this around move this around, make it look a little prettier. Okay, I'll move this. It should be in line with this first one. Okay. So, we'll kind of center that up, or I'll pull that out actually, because it looks better if I do that. I'm going to move this so I can read the numbers, and if anybody else pulls it up, they'll be able to read the numbers. On a normal drawing, you can't leave the radius down here on the part, but on a constrained sketch, it's fine. But I would want it to look as clean as possible, so I want both sides to look identical. For the chamfer call out, okay, it should look aesthetically pleasing. These should be lined up. Again, I'm going to use my grid to help me line it up approximately a half inch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but a half inch off the part. Okay, this should be a half inch off the part. I could bring this up to line up with this one here. Move that number in the center so it's readable. Okay, line them up. As, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just try and line them up so they look clean. All right, this should be a half inch off the part, but if it gets too close to that other dimension, then you might move it, but that looks okay. Again, this one will be the same on this side. All right, and this is good practice. So when you do your drawing, you, your drawing, all the dimensions we use in the drawing are going to be the same dimensions we use from the sketch. So this should be a quarter inch off of that. The only reason I'm not doing that is I want this to be lined up with this one. Okay. So the parts all looking nice and pretty. Everything's all set. I've got a plate with a slot in the middle. I've got my 45 degree chamfers at a half inch. One last thing we need to do is establish our fixed datums. This line is on the Y and this line is on the X. Sorry, I'm going to grab this one first. There's your datum A. There's your datum B. We use the dialog box again to establish the datum by hitting fix. Remove the horizontal verticals. Select OK. Now I have anchors replacing the H and V's. The one inch, one inch to locate this, I'm going to double click those and make those reference callouts. All right, just for clarity, I'll turn the grid off. Hopefully, you can see that a little bit better. Um, I never really tried this. Let's see if I go here, right click and go to properties, graphics. Maybe I can change that line weight. Unfortunately, it got the dimensions, so I didn't want to do that. I should have done that earlier. Without the constraints, one thing I can do here is I can go into the part body, open up the sketch. Should have done that before, made sure that I was doing it correct. 
I've been doing it so long though I forget to check because I kind of know what I'm doing here at this level. So I'm going to hide the constraints. Oh, which is going to be a little bit difficult, but we'll see if I can't get them all in, in the hide mode. I have to highlight them all and hide that. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just trying to do this for, oh, I could have done this too. Under auto search, I can right click and go to properties. And I'm going to beef up the line weight. Change that thickness to 5. Because I don't think these show up that great on the on the video. So I should have done this earlier. Now, the advantage of what I just did is instead of hiding all these so I can do a trap around them. I'm highlighting this in the tree using the shift command to grab the top and bottom so I can grab them all at once. Well, you notice the last time I did the trap, it, it thickened everything. What I want to do here is click on this line, then right click on it, and then go to object and hit auto search. So by selecting on a line and then doing the contextual menu on the line, it allows me to go to the line object and find the auto search. Auto search will find all the closed elements or all adjacent elements. So all of those lines, I want to beef that up for you just for clarity. With them highlighted, I can right click on it again and go to properties. And we can change that line weight to something thicker. And then I'll click off of it. And hopefully that shows up on the screen a little easier, what we're trying to get to. Uh, we've added our datums, so if you recall, we've got to right click and go to properties. And we're going to change this datum to datum A. So under feature properties, I type in datum A. Uh, make sure it's capital letters. Right click on this and go to properties. Change that to datum B. You see datum A and datum B are here. I got a nice pretty sketch. Go ahead and make your picture of that sketch. Once you got your picture done, we can exit out of sketch and make the pad. So we'll exit out of sketch. Whoa, look how it's on the XY plane this time. In the directions, it says the plate will be three inches thick. Okay, so we'll go back to Katia. Hit the pad icon under model. Make sure that the sketch is highlighted already, which is what it defaults to when it gets out of sketch. When you exit sketch, sketch one's already highlighted. We'll go to pad and it's going to be three inches long and we're going to reverse the direction so don't forget to invert the direction so all the dimensions will be right on top it will be easy for you to dimension select OK alright we've now created a pad see the pads actually the easiest part making the 3d part that's the easy part the part that takes the longest is actually creating that sketch that you had to build so after we've got a sketch completely constrained it's easy to make that pad um, we've checked all the closed profiles as long as the profiles are closed you should have no problem making your pad also known as a solid so now we're going to do our datums remember the datum face that you work on that you started with that's datum C if you recall this line here, the long line in my sketch, was datum A and this was datum B. Just to go back and reiterate, when I go to sketch one, this line here was datum A and this line here is datum B. And I know you're thinking maybe, 
you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought the horizontal line was datum A and the vertical line was datum B. I see another issue here. This has got to go, that perpendicularity, I should have turned that off. I'm going to click on that and hit delete and remove that perpendicularity. I don't need that. And it was red. When you see red, you know you got to get rid of it or address it. If you recall, we have to go to view, normal to view, normal to view. Now we're looking at it in that orientation where this was datum A and this is datum B. So this is that bottom of that part and this is that edge of that part. We'll go ahead and exit out of the sketch workbench. Okay. I'm going to show you a trick here. We're going to change our legacy preference to not position parallel to the screen. So I've turned off the second one down here. Okay. I've turned off position sketch plane parallel. So when I select OK, and I want to see sketch one, recall any way to get into sketch one is not to make a new one, but to double click it. I double click sketch one, it stays in that same orientation as I was when I was looking at the part. So remember that's datum A, that's datum B, this face on top, the y, x, y plane we're working on, that's datum C. Okay, I'm going to exit out of Sketcher. To establish your datums in yeah, I'll make a separate video, but for right now, to establish your datums, you use a different workbench. Under 3D, we've learned part design, we've learned drafting. The new workbench is going to be 3D tolerancing and annotation. So you'll have to find 3D tolerancing and annotation. It's a numeric, so it'll be towards the top. I'm going to click on 3D annotation, and you'll know I'm in the right workbench, because if you look at the top, it tells you it's your 3D tolerancing annotation. So I'm going to use annotation to put annotation on. Does that make sense? Look in the bottom for the tab called annotation. Activate annotation. Hit the arrow key to the right so that you can find the datum feature. I always do it in alphabetical order, datum A, B, and C first, because that's what it's going to do by default. So if I click on this one, the first one, it's, the letter is going to be A, so I might as well pick data A. I'm just going to pick right on the face of the part. And it pulls up 3D annotation, creates a view, calls it data A here. I'll rotate this around. Or no, for our, sorry. In this pop-up window, I'm just going to accept it. I say OK. All right. I select data feature again. Grab this one. This is data B. Okay, so I selected this one. Okay, and you notice it gets smashed flat. So it looks weird. I'm going to hit OK. So let's try datum C and see what happens. I'm going to click on this and click this face. Datum C looks fine. All right, now let's try and discover why did datum B get smashed to the screen like that? Well, Let's go to the View tab. Under the View tab, hopefully you've had a chance to try each one of these boxes here and see what they do. The View tab on the front view is the YZ plane. So when I look at the YZ plane, that's where I'm seeing datum A and C and datum B. If you look up here in the specification tree, you'll see View Front that's where it's actually putting its datums on the front view. So let's go back down here to the features and try some of these other views. The top view will be the top of the part. The right side view will look like this. But to me, these names don't really match up because to me the front now is not this. I don't consider this the front view. I consider the top view the front view. 
Okay, and I also feel it's rotated correct, incorrectly because see how a, X goes down and Y goes vertical? That's why when we go to the sketch, it does that. So I wish X would go horizontal and Y would go vertical. They have a reason for doing that when we create our orthographic views, but for right now, we're just going to go with the flow, okay? So what I like to do before I go to annotation and insert the datums, Let's go ahead and expand the tree. Let's get rid of all the datums we created. They're no good. So I just go ahead and say, okay, and wipe them out. In fact, I'm going to wipe out this annotation if I can and start from scratch. I'll pop back into my ISO view. But this looks weird to me. That's why it was important for us to learn how to use the model manipulation to rotate this around so I can get it to look like so. Okay. Now that I have this orientation, kind of like that, what I want to do is save this window so I can always get back to it. And how I do that is, I'm looking for a camera. Under the tab view, there's another tab for, it looks like a camera called views. Okay. If you don't see it, when you go to view, look all the way to the far right on the features. There's an arrow at the end here at the far right. Expand that arrow and this camera will show up, which allows us to save the view. Once you get it orientated the way you like, you can go to camera and click on this. It's like clicking your shutter on your camera or hitting the little button to, to take a picture. I click on it and it names it camera one. I'm going to change that name to engineering ISO view. So I abbreviate it to ENG ISO view. I abbreviate isometric for ISO. Hit enter and close that off. Now if I were to hit ISO view the orientation is this. If I find my camera, I can hit the down arrow and hit engineering ISO view and it remembers the view I stored it in. Okay, now just as soon as you're done with that, just close that off. Otherwise, you'll screw up your engineering ISO view. So just be careful for that. So, anyways, here's my engineering ISO view. I'm going to go to 3D. Oh, I'm already in tolerancing. Sorry. I was looking to change it to 3D tolerancing and annotation. I've already done that. So now what I'm going to do is go to view layout and click principal views. Now top and right are added. Front is there. <coughs> I don't need the right one, I just need the top and the front. I'll select OK. So I want top to be the active view, so you have to double click on it to get the top highlighted and blue. And I'm going to put datum A and B on the top view. Again, if I go to view and hit the top view that's the top view okay so everything I want to look at is going to be from the top as far as it's concerned don't think of the top as the top but it's the XY plane upside down and backwards okay we will go to the top view and back to annotation now I when I use the datum feature I pick on the bottom face 
and there's A. I select OK. I click on the datum feature again. I pick B. And then I select OK. Again, if I go to View and hit my ice, uh, top view, you'll notice that looking at the top view, it's perfect looking in the top view. A and B are orientated as such. So that looks great. And this is datum C, remember? Back to my camera. Find my engineering ISO view I created. And then close that off immediately. Datum C is my front face. If I put go to annotation and put datum C on the front face, it smashes it flat to the screen. So when I go back to the front view, you see A and B are fine, but C is smashed flat to that. I don't want C on the top, I want C on the front. So I'm going to hit the control Z for undo and remove datum C from the specification tree and the graphic screen. So I don't want datum C on the front view. Where do I want it? I or sorry, on the top view. Where do I want it? I want it on the front view. So I activate the front view by double clicking it. And I'll go back to my camera and go back to my engineering ISO view I created. I'll close that off. When I double click the top view, it hides, sorry, when I double click the front view, it hides everything in the top. So datum A and B are now in the hide mode. I'm going to add datum C by going to annotation and I'm going to select the datum feature. I pick the face on the front and there's your datum C. When I select OK, if I go into view and choose the front view, see datum C looks fine. We'll go back to the camera, hit the engineering ISO view. If I want, I can right click on the top view and unhide it. Click on my datum features and unhide them. And now I see datums A, B, and C have been identified. Just like we have to identify them on the drawing, we've now identified them in the 3D model. So the bottom face is datum A, the left side is datum B, and this front face here is datum C. Okay, I'm almost wishing I had done this in a separate video, but hopefully you'll catch this. And uh, if you need to, just fast forward to that section when working on other parts. Now that I've established my datums, I think the easiest thing to do, uh, remember, just close that camera off so we don't screw it up. See, it's trying to, it thinks I've modified it. I don't want to modify it. So I just canceled it. And now I think I've screwed it up. Let's go back to my camera. See what I did? I screwed up my engineering ISO view. Now it saved this as the engineering ISO view. So again, remember when you rotate it around, you get it into the orientation you do want to have it in. When I try and close this now, we'll say OK to save it. I'll throw it back into the ISO view. Go to your camera. Hit your engineering ISO view that you've created. Okay, Remember to close it off immediately so it doesn't screw up your engineering ISO view. I guess it was good I screwed it up so you can see what happens when you do it wrong. Let's go ahead and hide that datum feature. Okay, actually undo that. I'm sorry. You want to hide the whole set, annotation set. So everything in annotations in hide now. All right, you know the drill for the rest of it. We're going to apply. Did I say what to apply for material? Yes, we're going to use 6061 for material. So back to Katia. 
You probably can do this without even watching me anymore. We'll go to, uh, uh, we got to switch back to the part design workbench. So hit 3D, go back to part design. Under part design, we go to tools and we find the material browser. We're going to search for 6061 T6 aluminum. Remember to pick the one that says core, hit your down arrow, and apply that. When the wheel of death here stops, we can close this window off and select on that top collector and hit the green check if we like the material in the specification tree, which we do. So we'll hit the green check. Materials now applied. Go to view, shade with material if you want to look looking like aluminum which kind of already did since it was gray except for now when I rotate around it's shiny okay oh I got it all cattywampus no problem expand this find my camera back to my engineering ISO view and immediately close that off got materials applied now it's time to simply do my measurements I know you can probably do most of them. Let's do this. We'll go back to tools, measure item. I'm going to grab this edge. That's six inches long. I'm good with that. I'm going to grab the depth here. Go with that one. I'll grab this radius here. I'm good with this one. Select OK. OK, I want to. I got my width. I got my length. So this one being length, this one being width. I need my height. I can't grab the line for the edge for the height, so I must use measure between. And I will use the trick I taught in the other one by grabbing the bottom and the top surface. OK, and I know that's three inches. I've just confirmed it with my measurements. So the question is, oh, wait a minute, Dave, Dave, what are you doing? Okay, I'm going to make a slight adjustment. Uh, it would be easy enough to change this. Oh, this is supposed to be a 4 by 6 Well, you know what? Here, this is good practice. We need to learn to modify because we don't do everything perfect. So I think that's why I did one and a half inch before, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's go into our sketch. Let's hide our measurements just to get them out of the way for now. Let's go into our sketch. Change this to four. This to be in the middle has got to be two. Okay, so that wasn't a problem to fix. Um, Unfortunately, it's going to mess up all my parameters, so we got to move these down again and line them up where they're supposed to be. Okay, so I should, the easy way to do it is to go back to my grid. Oh, by the way, did you notice it didn't go flat to my grid? That's because in my legacy preferences, I had turned the position off so it wouldn't go flat to the screen. So it's all working out. I remember. I forgot to show you that anyway. So I exit the sketch. When I double click sketch one, and I do normal to view, normal to view, this is now four inches. Now it's flat to my screen. These are all nice and lined up and pretty. Okay, the only dimension I had to change was this to two and this to four. All right, I will exit out. I will pull this back out of hide. I'm going to go back to view and look for my camera. Find that engineering ISO view. And then immediately close that off. Okay, so you've got length, width, and height now. I have this radius call out. I need to do another measure between and what I'm going to do is select 
I'm going to try and grab the edge and this edge over here. That's weird. Let's cancel that. Let's go measure between. Let's try and go axis to axis. So you got to rotate this around and get in the center of the axes. Make sure the axis bars are showing up. And it tells me that that is two inches. So that's looking good. Um, I could just leave it right in the middle there. That would be fine. Let's we'll select OK to keep it. OK, and I'll rotate this back. See how we're looking. <clears throat> we got to measure the chamfer under measure between. <clears throat> you may recall from an earlier demo, I chose to use infinite geometry on my first selection. So I grab this line, our face, and it's infinite on that plane to this edge. And I get a half inch distance. I'll select OK. I will select, oh, sorry. Dang it, let me undo that. Measure between. I'm going to select. Oh, no, I did want that. Let me see. Cancel that. I'm going to hit Control-Y to redo it. Uh, I may have screwed that up. So let's redo this. Measure, measure between. Select that face and this edge, which we now confirm is a half inch, which is great. We can now measure between <clears throat> this face to this face, and we know that I don't want the distance, I want to customize that to an angle and turn off the distance and move this angle up here and select OK. Alright, the only thing we haven't dimensioned is the location of the slot. <clears throat> we would again use measure between grab the bottom face and I'm going to try and grab the edge of this part and hopefully I'll find the center point <clears throat> which for some reason it's not doing let me cancel that and if it doesn't it used, it used to have no problem grabbing that center point I'll try and do a measure between And see if I it doesn't let me get that center point <clears throat> again used to go to edge to try and get that center point so what I'll do is I'll just go grab the curve and grab the bottom line or bottom face I want to customize it because I need the distance and not the angle and it is doing a measurement verifying it's in the true two inch dimension location I'll select OK so we know we're two inches from the bottom up and let's do a measure between select this inside surface of the curve grab the outside datum A uh, B grab datum B and there's that measurement that's two inches select OK go back to my view go to my camera shot find my engineering ISO view and close that off so now I have all my measurements and we're ready to make a snapshot of all those measurements. <clears throat> if you go to quality control or your planner or you're trying to review somebody else's part so you can make the other part, being able to measure stuff real quickly is going to be very, uh, a very useful tool out in production. All right, I'm going to expand the tree, make my snapshot of my measurements in the tree and the measurements on the screen. I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to hit inertia. So under tools, we use the inertia command. And pick 
the part body. Remember to grab the part body. Expand my tree for my measure inertia. There's my mass, weight, center, and volume. Yours should all match mine. And then go ahead and uh, I like to kind of zoom over here. Get this over here and make your snapshot of your picture with your inertia. And that concludes building your part. You've done all the measurements now. You have created all your annotation. You've learned to add to annotation. We've got material. We've got fully constrained sketch. And you are off and rolling. And this is pretty much what we do in production. We start making parts and constraining them and make solids and then analyze them. All right. There will be more videos um, to come. Go back to how to create a a drawing border and insert a border and then go back to creating orthographic views and if need be modify your orthographic views and then apply your dimensions. You can go back and review the videos on how to do that if need be.